Hey everybody, um, thanks for the opportunity to be here. My name is Andres Stratz. I'm a product manager at Chemexon, and I'd like to talk to you about a design hub for early phase drug discovery. Uh, I think my starting perspective will be slightly different uh, than everybody else is in this session, I imagine. I, I would actually start uh, on project slide decks. You know, those compound progression slide decks that start with some sort of uh, background on the target, like signaling pathways um, and description of the disease. Then they get to a competitive landscape, like active patterns um, by other pharma or biotechs. Um, then as much as possible, there is description of the protein ligand interaction with pharmacophores and non-covalent interactions. And as the project starts uh, gathering data, there are various extracts from the results, like uh, a lead compound profile or, or an SAR. Uh, all the while, the, the project is growing in size because of this iterative design, make, test, analyze cycle. So I have seen cases where there are two, three, or 400 uh, PowerPoint slides in a file. And, and I wonder why chemists do this. And, and I think the simplest answer uh, is that it's, it's flexible. It lets you store all this information and, and you can always add an extra slide. Trouble is um, these files have different versions on different shared drives um, and there's various degrees of consistency. So that's not very 2020-ish. Um, and, and we started thinking about whether there is room for improvement here. Uh, is there something that we could do better? Um, so th the core concept that I would like to, to focus on um, is the hypothesis. Uh, so here we have a fairly recent publication um, from a, a small Canadian uh, biotech, which just about the figure has a nice sentence. Uh, that I think uh, helps us uh, conceptualize uh, what is it that we actually need here. So they say they hypothesized uh, that they could improve by this distribution into the central nervous system and maintain potency by modifying polar substituents and, and lowering TPSA. Uh, that's a very typical way of thinking about how to take the project forward. And that's what we refer to as rational design. It builds on a very strong foundation of, of data analysis. In this case, um, previous projects. So they have an idea about what is the optimal uh, PSA range and their compound happens to be outside of that. So, so this leads to um, the, the chemist thinking about what to make next. So, so this leads to uh, a, a, a design and synthesis driven thinking. Uh, that of course also immediately takes us to the prioritization aspect because others also think about different chemotypes and different compounds to solve the problem. Um, and then on weekly discussions, we need to be careful and, and see what is the status to identify um, unexpected bottlenecks or obstacles. Um, and, and when the compounds are ready and when the assays are ready, uh, we need to keep the big picture in mind. So we need to um, understand why we made the compound and what is it that we tried to learn, uh, prove or disprove with it. Um, this is very similar to how the whole project is building on uh, inferred knowledge from other projects. And, and likewise, we want to support future projects from uh, working smarter because the data that we produce is usable for them. So that's very difficult to do uh, with PowerPoint and also not very 2020-ish if we did that with PowerPoint. So we set out to uh, make an attempt at solving that with one of our partners um, last year. Um, the, the solution comes in two parts. Uh, the first one is, is actually focusing on the scientific rationale. So what you can see um, is a combined image, graphics, uh, text, and chemistry editor as part of an integrated application. So with that, we can describe, you know, this unexpected uh, ligand efficiency and the compound that produces it 
and supply all the additional data that we can to describe our thinking and our drivers. Um, and we can use our style. Um, we can describe the compounds and start the analysis into how we could attempt to uh, figure out this phenomenon. Um, we can annotate the chemical structures and break them down into pharmacophoric regions. Um, and, and it's not just uh, this graphical description. Um, of course, below that, we have a rich text editor with links and, and file attachments. So everything about the background that drives this project forward can be shared in this single place. Um, the other thing that we kind of need to sort out uh, is of course about the compounds. So we need to link them to hypotheses. Uh, I like to call this the virtual registry. Um, before I get to the registration aspect, of course, we need to see how the compounds get into the system. Um, and there's kind of nothing new there. Uh, we have the capabilities that you would expect. There are micro and manual designs. There are enumerations. You can bring in compounds from different analyses and models. Um, here we have a simple enumeration and kind of similarity searches and FISCAM properties. Um, and the, once we have a selection of nice compounds, we can use in well-known informatics capabilities to uh, figure out our personal preferences, like using this calculated MPO score, find the best compounds um, and, and separate them from like, the rest. Um, once we're done with that, we can get to sharing the compounds. So in this design set view, um, I can simply share the results and take this through a quality control process, which flags all the compounds that have a problem. This has a way to catch uh, structural issues, mobility issues, or anything that is to do with company rules. And then the compounds pass that, they get IDs. And it's as simple as that. We don't need to fill complicated forms. We don't need to bother with inconsistency either. So in an automated fashion, we can now refer to this compound as compound five, uh, 527, 529, 525, whatever. Um, so then finally, what we have is that at any point in time, we can look into this hypothesis and see what information has been gathered about the drivers um, and what are the compounds and what are sort of the chemotypes or chemical series that can help us uncover this. Um, but from this data uh, in our database, kind of, um, we can offer additional views as well that can uh, be a massive productivity boost to a project team. And, and one of that is a Kanban board or like a Trello view. Um, with this, uh, it is very, very easy to record uh, the decisions in a weekly discussion by, for instance, dragging the progress forward. Um, and, and we can do this on a hypothesis or on a design set or a, an individual compound level as well. And we can use this for personal uh, productivity boosts as well. Like what are the tasks that are assigned to me uh, in the order of priority? And basically, am I working on what's most important uh, to take the project to success? The other thing that we can get out from all of this data um, is um, by basically any value from a knowledge base that we can uh, use in future projects. Um, so without a focus on my current activities, I can use this universal search capability uh, to find answers. Kind of how uh, in, in Google search, depending on your query, you might get um, a blog post, a video, um, a, an article, or, or an address. Uh, so whichever fits uh, the query. So here we can combine chemistry, text, uh, metadata filters, and, and find what has matched that, uh, that specific query. We can use this system to find out if other colleagues at the company have come across um, a given problem with a, with a scaffold or a chemotype. And then it might be as simple as walking up to them and asking for their help or their expertise. 
Now, uh, this, this wouldn't be BioIT without talking uh, a little bit about the technology that, that helps us deliver this, um, depending on the, the customer's need, whether that's on premises or on the cloud. Um, so on this fairly simple architecture diagram, I don't think you will find any surprises. Um, we have broken down um, uh, the application into as many pieces as possible and made sure that uh, they all work on, on AWS essentially. Um, so in the middle, we have our design hub, uh, which is a web server. It contains the business logic and it connects to, to Postgres for persistence and full text search. On AWS, that would be RDS or Aurora. Uh, then we have our identity provider helping with users and groups and roles. Um, then we have our log server helping with analytics and alerting. Uh, on AWS, that would be CloudWatch. Then we have a separate Cheminformatics backend providing structured searches, checks, and analysis. So this is the JCAM backend um, working on AWS Fargate or on in on-premises Docker containers. And then we have our plugins, which is a, a connection to the computational chemistry infrastructure to describe all those compounds and guide the, the design and synthesis. Um, so the, the plugins, I, I think um, we need to get into a little bit. How does that fit the system and, and how can we do that in a, uh, a flexible manner? Because it, it, it needs to be flexible to support um, each organization with each project uh, at the given stage they are. So they, they must offer great flexibility. I, I think the system that we have is, is, is good. Um, based on feedback, I can tell that uh, the system that we have has exceptional satisfaction, uh, at least on the user interface, uh, with its solution among, among uh, its users. And, and we can use the plugins in, in various uh, workflow stages. So we can use this to describe a set of compounds or downstream a certain amount of data or, or export things in different file formats if necessary. Or, or, or to something as simple as to get the real ID of this compound if we use an external uh, registry. And the technology that lets us do this uh, is available for Node.js, Java, and Python. And, and of course, out of the box, there is serverless support for uh, services like uh, Lambda or, or Fargate. All the examples that we can have been published uh, with their source code on, on GitHub. And, and so with this, we can provide all the basics that you would imagine, like uh, physical chemical properties and potentially purchasable compounds from an amine real or actually purchasable compounds from e-molecules or simple superimpositions or uh, HERC predictions or, or legislative documents. But, but there's so much more as well that we can provide like this uh, brand new potentially purchasable uh, catalog from MQ or a visualization of the, the chemical sweet spot or toxicity uh, or um, public data from uh, Unichem or toxicity predictions or uh, patents. We can run patent searches with your compounds or connect to Campbell for like public assay data. Uh, look at PubChem analogs for inspiration. Uh, look at Shul Campbell, which has exemplified uh, structures pulled out from patents, and we can run these freedom to operate searches on it. Look at the CLOD profile, look at toxic substructures, and, and, and so on and so on and so on. So there is great variety and flexibility with the plugin system. And, and then this is basically just an extra to your design hub um, to kind of wrap up, um, which has this graphical hypothesis capability to do away with the PowerPoints. Um, and we have a virtual registry uh, to sort out the chemical structures and to link them to uh, graphical hypotheses. And for productivity boosts and, and more, we have different levels of compound grouping and, and Kanban boards and personal to-do lists. Uh, so I know this is not all, uh, but, but this is the, the time we had. Um, please let me know uh, if, if this problem that, that they describe is something that you also think about. I would love to have a discussion about this with you. Uh, find me in the chat. Um, 
or, or visit our virtual booth at BioIT or, or register on chemexon.com uh, for further updates. Um, and thank you.